you're seeking an adventure to hike Pacific Northwest mountains, camp in the wild, swim in icy lakes, and dance in wildflowers. This is Washington. Day one, we drove two and a half hours to Mount Baker Snoqualmie National Forest to the popular Chains Lake Loop, a 10K loop with 547 meter elevation gain with an average of four hours to complete. We parked at Artist Point Trailhead and ventured clockwise, which I highly recommend. It starts with a beautiful view of Mount Chuksan along the edges before a vast open meadow. You'll then hit Iceberg Lake and Haynes Lake, where the still water is cold but refreshing to swim in. Between the two lakes is where mosquitoes were most prominent. The surrounding rock formations and rugged pathways reminded me of Game of Thrones. After going uphill for a while, you'll stumble upon a magnificent open view of the mountain pass with Baker in the back and water in the middle. It was such a peaceful location to rest and have snacks that he probably took a quick nap. It was a hot day and we barely ate on the long drive down, so this hike was more challenging to us than it would have been, taking us almost five hours in the heat. After walking along the mountain edges again and descending towards the last lake to the Austin Pass picnic area, there's another uphill before making your way back to the parking lot. Overall, a gorgeous moderately challenging hike, but super worth if you're well hydrated and fed. Drive two and a half hours around Mount Baker to the south area, where you'll end your day through a forest service road into the well-known Baker Hot Springs and soak up the evening. Make your way deeper into the North Cascades by Rainy Pass and hike the well-known Maple Pass Trail of 10.5 kilometers, four-hour hike with 659 meter elevation gain. You'll hit an open view of Lake Anne before you ascend to the highest point at the top of the crater-like summit. Drive along the highway toward Blue Lake where you'll venture into the greenery and end the hike with a rewarding dip in the bluest cold lake with fish swimming around underneath. Diablo Lake is a serene place for kayaking, canoeing, and camping with its breathtaking scenery of its distinctive hue. Drive on either Diablo or Ross Dam, which collectively harness the power of Skagit River to produce electricity for Seattle. When leaving North Cascades area, drive south along Mountain Loop Highway, which apparently is a known long road for dispersed camping, as we saw many, many cars tucked along the river. We went as close to our next day's hike location as possible and found a nice and large secluded area with views of the sunset to settle in. These dispersed camping spots are only allowed within national park boundaries in the US and many apps and tools will depict where you can and can't stay, so be aware. Day three, explore the lush green forest through an easy family-friendly trail before hitting the big four ice caves. It gets extremely cold as you approach it, so bring a jacket. This one's a little bit smaller, but it's still got a frozen air coming out of it, like a freezer. It's freezing. I peeked in one, but remember to exercise caution near the caves for any rock slides or falling ice.
After a drive through coffee shop, drive another three and a half hours to wondrous Mount Rainier National Park, covering 236,000 acres full of diverse ecosystems, recreational opportunities, alpine meadows, glaciers, and forests. Its centerpiece, the highest mountain in the state, is Mount Rainier, large enough that you have to drive two to three hours to get to any corner. Tolmy Peak is one of the most beautiful fire lookout hikes and is the best view of Mount Rainier that's sitting above the clouds if it's not already being covered by it. You won't believe the height and distance you'll cover from the time that you see the lookout at the top and the time that you get there. The lookout itself sits at 5,920 meters of elevation and the room is where park rangers would bunk at night to watch out for fires. Keep an eye out for mountain goaties and other animals, and don't forget a jacket because it's quite windy at the top. Make your long drive down to Paradise Area, which is the south of the mountain, and explore Reflections Lake and Narada Falls. That's Mount Rainier, and this is Reflections Lake. This is just one side of it. Uh, right now it's super windy, so you can't really see the reflections because the water's not still enough, but it's still just as beautiful of a view. Settle down in one of the many campsites around there so you're ready to go in the morning. The first hike of the day is another iconic one, the Skyline Trail around Mount Rainier. This one provides a stunning panoramic view of surrounding mountains, alpine meadows of wildflowers, and has shorter options if you don't do the whole loop. I recommend Clockwise, and the first part is spectacular and my favorite part of the hike. Rocky clear plaz with marmots singing and chipmunks scurrying for food and a view of the mountain ahead of you the entire time. Hike up to the panoramic point to see the view of the chain of volcanoes, Mount Adam, Mount Hood, Pinnacle Peak, Plummer Peak, and Mount St. Helens. You'll descend down more rocky and dirt-covered part of the mountains before hitting meadows and more greenery. We came here a month prior and the entire mountain was covered with snow, no clear paths, and almost unhikeable without snowshoes. So we finally got to enjoy these beautiful hikes. The last portion of the hike offers stunning views of Myrtle Falls and Mount Rainier in the backdrop. Soak in your achievement by enjoying the Paradise Inn souvenir shop and lunch post hike. The last hike of the day is another popular destination with a historic fire lookout in the Gifford Pinchot National Forest. The road to get there is a rocky forest service road, so take it slow. High Rock Lookout is a more challenging hike. The last portion is a very steep climb up to the lookout point. So we might take out our hiking sticks. Oh my God. Oh. Okay. We're going a little bit higher there to the top.
Many find themselves over clouds at sunrise or sunset, or on a clear day like this, views of all the mountains from east to west, and forests in all directions. This lookout sits at 1,731 meters, making it a vantage point for sweeping views of the surrounding landscape. It was our three year anniversary! <laughs> Reward yourself with a nice cabin retreat in the woods for the night at Wellspring Spa and Woodland Retreat. Keep in mind that currently only two of their cabins offer exclusive hot tub, massage, and sauna spa experience, but nonetheless, it's a peaceful place to stay. Book early and choose from the various types of lodging immersed in the forest. We reserved the classic Tanaya, a classic log cabin inspired by woodland fairy tales. As there were no kitchen options at Wellspring, we found a nice dispersed site in the morning to make brunch before heading out for another two hour drive to the last popular fire lookout hike. It was an hour lineup at the ranger entrance to the parking as it was so popular. Mount Fremont Lookout Trail is a 9 km hike with 338 meter elevation gain for 3 hours, with a fire lookout built in 1934, and the views of Mount Rainier from this third angle is so worth the drive and wait. Domestic water supply. Walk slowly and carefully along the rocky, narrow paths on the sides of the mountains until you hit the lookout. On one side views the mountains up close, with binoculars available at the top, and the other side viewing vast meadows. Keep your eyes peeled as you may mistake these little mountain goaties as little white dots, but if you zoom in you'll find them all running around. So many mountain goats! Just like look like little white dots, but Oh my gosh! End off the night at another campsite, whether that be front country or dispersed. During our trip, we found dispersed camping for all nights except the Woodland Spa, but there are ample sites around Mount Rainier that are reservable or first come first serve, so make sure to do your research beforehand. Thank you. 